Hey, welcome back Design Squad. This is a new series or mini series. I want to share with you how to make a design system from scratch. And this is relevant especially for those who work in smaller design teams or those who just want to tinker around and introduce some new ways to better the design processes, uh, to better the handovers to the developers and so forth. And if you remember, I have this video on design systems and what they are and how to get started. And it's quite a comprehensive one where in a few minutes you can understand exactly what we are. In this specific video, I just wanted you to introduce a mini series and exactly what you can expect in the upcoming handful of episodes. And it's gonna be maybe 10, 12 episode tops. So it's gonna be really comprehensive, really tangible. And I'm gonna showcase how you can make a design system in Sketch app. Because Sketch is so accessible and so easy to use and almost every established design team uses Sketch or Figma to an extent but Sketch is something you can install and fiddle immediately and make a design system on existing products or make design system for a products in the future to be. In this episode I want to talk to you exactly what design systems are or almost extract the themes from my previous video. If you're not new to the design systems then go to the end of the video where I'm actually discussing gonna discuss the product I plan to demo in order to make a design system as well as how I'm gonna approach it so you know atomic design principles and so forth it's still good to recap but feel free to skim through if you're new to this watch it all though I can guarantee that you're gonna get something out of it let's go through the basics of what design system is at the very basic level as you can see here the definition is just a collection of reusable components which can scale over time which can be shared and which can can be maintained so it becomes like a, a design library which has a living document qualities. You can make a more holistic ecosystem out of different components, you can rapidly prototype and design different bits because you have reusable components across. The handovers between design teams and developers become so much easier because you have the same language and the same exact principles which you hand over and of course it allows you to structure your work and think more like a developer so again you become like one single squad instead of having your own design thinking, you have development and you know, nobody really communicates well. And of course it saves money for a business in the end as a result. Now the bad thing is that lots of people feel like this innovation is being stifled because they have to reuse a lot of components. There is a lot of work to be done when you introduce new feature because you have to go through experimentation phase as well as update all the other teammates, all the developers developers about new releases, you have to go through some sort of gatekeeping processes so that the new components are actually worthy to be introduced. You have to have some sort of validation from the users, let's say, or from a business that, okay, this new button version has to be like this, so let's pull it into the library to be reused in the future. And it requires new processes and it might take a lot of time. And again, you might need dedicated people to do that. And so that's why almost every job board right now in UX field and technology field have UX designers who are going to be responsible purely for design system. So you learning this bit and knowing how to do so, it's going to give you a fundamentals if you really want to specialize, if you really love doing that type of architecture of UI components aspects of the work. And if you do, it's it's amazing because it's, this is really for you. Now, key principles again to design system, it has to scale, you have to be able to collaborate with other people and you have to be able to share your work so that you can easily update it. And it has to be flexible enough for to fit any project's needs. So let's for example Airbnb design system it's quite flexible but it's quite specific however I know for sure if they have internal projects they use exactly the same design systems throughout every service every platform they might have internally and externally because every firm especially such large organizations have so many different tools which they not you know showcasing to customers because it's internal and I can't guarantee they use the same exact design uh, principles, systems, brand guidelines, and as well as code snippets. Let's fast forward to our approach for this specific uh, tutorial series and how we are gonna do our design system in tangible terms. And we are gonna use Brad Frost atomic design principles, the system which you know has been coined quite some time back a few years back and it's been pretty good because it describes it in a sort of linear way 
where you can scale it from the smallest bits, which are atoms to molecules, to organisms, to templates and to pages. And so every time you introduce something new, it has to fit in both steps and it affects everything like an onion. So it scales. And even if you introduce a new page, when you have to go back and update from the atom up towards the pages and templates and so forth, you know, it's almost like a crash course here, but hey, maybe it's useful for someone, is the atoms, molecules, and organisms, because that's usually the biggest question mark from my junior designers or peers, is what does atom mean, so what molecules mean, so what organisms, and think of it as a Lego figure. Well, atoms would be the smallest pieces of that minifig, then you have the molecules, which is basically tinier, bigger organisms, and that could be, let's say, if the atom is your button, uh, your molecule would be button as well as an input field, perhaps, or an input field and a label of an input field and an icon of a warning, like an error warning. So it becomes, you know, it scales that way. And organism could be whole type of form, contact us form with a button, multiple input fields, multiple text strings and so forth. So it scales that way like an onion. That's one way to think about it. One bit which I need to definitely approach with you is how we're going to do this. So there are two plans how to do this. If you want to go in depth, go back to the video I showcased before about design systems for me. I'm going to add it as a first video in this playlist. And so whenever you have questions, please refer back to it because it can give you some ideas of how and why we're doing what we're doing. But there are two ways to approach creation and maintenance of design system. One, you just pick your successful pages, your successful products which have been validated, user tested, commercially proof, and you know that those patterns are amazing. And then you start making design system. And two is to start the new project from the smallest aspects like atoms, molecules, organisms, and scale it upwards into pages and then validate and then keep updating. It's up to you how you want to do it. However, in this case, because we need to speed up and I need to show you tangible demo instead of just fluffing around. I don't think you want to hear me just talk about it. I think you want me to show you how it's done. And so I'm going to pick one product which everybody knows about or at least heard of and we're going to go work backwards. So I'm going to use the plan A. I'm going to pick established mock-up, established branding guidelines, and then I'm going to make a design system which we can then update and then we can touch base on plan B of how you would maintain it going forward. And so that's probably most likely scenario for you as well as you're going to practice of how to do your own design systems on your own once you are done with this tutorial series. Now, a basic diagram which I want you to memorize and it's, it's a kind of like a hack, a mixture of co-creation process as well as my notes. So let's say if you have some sort of UX process, it feeds into the front end, there's a lot of idea, conceptualized prototyping product. And then once it's done and you know that these features are about to be launched, you share the knowledge of your artisans or other colleagues like peer designers, and then you can actually update the design system. So think of it as this way. But whenever you are launching something, whenever you prove that that feature is worthy enough, that's the time when you're going to be updating your design system and pulling into design system. We're going to revisit this, so don't worry if you don't get it yet. It's going to be quite clear once you're done with those 10 or 12 videos which are upcoming where I'm going to discuss exactly how we're going to achieve this. I'm going to showcase exactly which product I'm planning to use to make a design system and it's Microsoft Teams. Now, Microsoft Teams, you know, it overtook Slack and it's 2019, I think in July or June, it overtook Slack by the user base because all the corporations worldwide are using Office 365 partnerships. And so the user base is automatically, you know, it goes into thousands of every sign up of a contract. So it's really easy for them to adapt. However, the internet is you know, it's quite bare if you look for, let's say, design system for Microsoft Teams, I couldn't find any. And so I decided, well, I'm going to create you guys one design system. Kudos to Microsoft Teams for making quite flexible and intuitive layout, which is quite blocky. So it's going to be easy for me to pick and choose of what to insert in my design system for Microsoft Teams. But as you can see, this is what I recreated based on one of the screenshots I found 
online. This is an actual representation of how the sketch file looks like and it's all going to be editable. And so I'm going to take these components and I'm going to deconstruct them into design systems bit by bit from atoms, from the smallest bits into bigger pages like this. So we're going to end up with one page, several templates, several organisms, even more molecules and hundreds or maybe at least tens of atoms out of this mock-up which I just created. As well as I'm going to use some of the guidelines. So imagine if in a real world you would be probably joining an organization or a business, a client, which already has brand guidelines. And this is something we need to port into design systems so that we can use them. And it could be that you name it quarks, or it could be that this is your atoms, this is your starting point if there are functional patterns. I'm gonna talk about it in the next area where I'm gonna you know, showcase exactly what each of the segments means. But you're gonna get to drill really easily. All you need to know right now that we're gonna just take teams and we're gonna create Microsoft a design system. And so, if you're ready to roll, smash that like button. In the description below, I'm gonna give you a link to a playlist for a whole series of this because I'm gonna release episodes over time. Stay tuned and I'll see you in the next session.